we're in uh, my shop now, and um, you'll notice that I've added a, uh, a center line. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that center line roughly with a caliper and decide how big my wood piece should be. Um, so this uh, looks like three and a half inches will be the biggest. I always make it bigger than I need because this center line is never center. The bottom part is bigger than the top part. And the reason that you want it a bit bigger is uh, we're going to make a cut on the inside of the lure down that center line and we want the we want to use the, the table saw to do that um, and make sure that this uh, template will actually fit on the wood. Many times I've done it I got a little too skinny, got a little too cheap and uh, all of a sudden when I went to outline the um, the lure the, the bottom belly would kind of fall off the edge so uh, I make it bigger than I need. Okay, so I've cut my boards. They come in, uh, this is, uh, I like pine. Uh, select pine, actually, from Home Depot. And it comes in three quarter inch uh, uh, pieces by various widths. So this one, I have made uh, roughly, roughly three and a half inches. One of the things I do is I mark any little problems with the wood so I can see them later. But probably one of the most important things that I do is see this little notch that I put in? So I put in this notch, I make it, I'm gonna be using uh, 336, uh, sorry, 332nd inch stainless steel wire. So I make the slot about 330 seconds, knowing that's probably twice as big as I need. And the important thing that I do is I'll run it through the saw against the fence one way and then I'll spin it 180 and run it again and that makes sure that that um, channel is absolutely dead center so when I put it together like this you will see that that channel lines up perfectly The next thing I do is I measure the widest part of the lure. That is going to determine the absolute uh, size of the wood going through the planer. So when I do this, I find it's right over the shoulder, which it should be. Shoulder is always the biggest area. And then, of course, what I do is I now take my wood and I go. Oh, look, it's absolutely the right size. I haven't done anything to it. I didn't need to use a planer on this one. So I'm good to go for the next step. Okay, so I've um, found the exact center of that little channel and I have marked the entire board with it. Just one side so far. So. Now I'm in a position to use the template, finally, after all this work. Let's just line that up. The center line of the template, of course, goes on the center line of the wood. And around you go. one. I've made this piece of wood good for two. Usually I do this to make it easier to go through the planer, but since I didn't need it, All right, there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do 
is put these two pieces together. Make, make, make sure, of course, that the little channel that you cut lines up. And then I'm going to use a brad nailer and put in nails so I can cut these out and they'll, they'll stay together. I'll put a nail here, 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 and here on both of them. Okay, here are the, uh, the two lures. I've uh, put in the uh, rod nails to hold them together. They're not glued yet. And uh, you can see they're lined up very well with that channel on both sides. So the next thing I can do is I can head over to the band saw and cut these out. And that's, I'll be back. Okay, so here are the, uh, the two lures. They're, they're cut off with the bandsaw and there's no glue in them yet. So you can see that the top comes off, both of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of glue right here and right here and right here and right here and then I'm gonna clamp them together. And then once they're dry, I'll take the clamps off and then I'm going to set up some lines on here to, uh, to help me uh, sand off the wood that I don't need. Okay, so here are the uh, two lures. Each of them has been uh, glued to the other. A very small amount of glue and uh, a little bit at each tip. Uh, just a, the more you like you're going to be splitting these later so if you put too much glue it's going to be a nightmare so just a tiny 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 little bit of glue now i like to use elmer's glue elmer's glue is uh, this stuff this is available everywhere but the interesting thing i don't know if you can actually see this but it's a ANSI type 1 waterproof Okay, so we've taken off the clamps, and now one of the most important things to do is to mark your eyeballs, the center of your eyes. And you do that, you take your picture that you took earlier, and you mark your template. Then you put your template on your lure, and you put a little dot, and then on the other one, you put another little dot, the, uh, the other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put holes for the various loops. There's one hole, two holes, and then right about here is a hole for the lead to pour in. Uh, we'll do this one a little bit later and you'll see how that's done. That's actually part of that little channel that we, uh, we cut in. So what I've done on my template is I have marked the loop hole, the lead hole, and the bottom loop hole. And what I've done is you put it on top and then you just mark the sides like I've done here. Now this one I've already drilled the holes and one of the key tricks here is when you're drilling down you will feel the, um, the bit go through that channel that we dug before. And on this hole, we want to go a little bit beyond that. And on these two holes, we just go down to that. And there's a reason for that, which I'll show you in later videos. Now, I use a brad point uh, bit for this. It's very accurate, made in Germany. And it's, uh, it's some of the very good tools, precision tools that I have. They make great cuts and uh, I, I, for these, I used an eight millimeter. We're going to be using a 332nd stainless steel wire to put on the center. Matter of fact, I can show you. And you like this should slip all the way down. Now, this loop doesn't exist here, of course. This loop will exist up here. So. Anyway, you can, you can see that the loop goes all the way through from side to side. So our next step is we're going to use the uh, tabletop sander. 
and we're going to grind these uh, uh, rough edges from the, the bandsaw down, and we're going to we're going to sand them right down to the lines. Okay, I'll get I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so I'm kind of measuring the nose of the lure to see how, how wide I want to make that nose. And so I'm thinking about total width. Bear in mind, this is not the final uh, width that you'll grind to, but it's a guideline. So I've got... Uh, 0.4 of an inch. So I'm going to make it 0.2 of an inch because it's I'm going to mark half on either side. Now I'm going to uh, mark this like so. And like so. plastic ruler to line up that mark with the shoulder which you may recall is the widest part okay. now I'm going to do that to the tail as well, just as a, as a guide. So when you're working on the tabletop sander, you have something to go by. Oh yeah. Oops. Notice I did the wrong mark here. So you can fix that. Nothing's unfixable at this point, anyway. Okay. So now you're going to go all the way back here. Didn't show it so good, so I'll just remake that mark. Okay. Now I'm also going to mark the center. That's very important when you're grinding or sculpting.
do this on the bottom as well. I usually put it in a vise for this. It's kind of tough to do it by hand, but I thought you might enjoy seeing how it's done, or at least what's to be done. I like to use the red pens because they show up much better than the lead. 